There are several major impacts uh, from water scarcity on the energy sector. Water is a critical input throughout the energy value chain from mining, um, oil and gas exploration and production, all the way through to downstream refining, and then finally, of course, in electrothermal power generation. Um, so water scarcity poses a risk because if any of those operations don't have access to their water supplies, then they can face a range of problems ranging from um, delays, there could be inefficiencies in, in generation which would impact an operator's or an energy company's bottom line, um, and also even revenue impacts. Um, so I think that the two primary um, the two most interesting areas are in upstream oil and gas and in electric power generation. Um, the electric power sector is the largest um, withdrawer of water from surface water in the U.S. They're also the second largest consumer of water in the U.S. right behind agriculture. And so as a result of that, they're very susceptible to shortages. Um, I think they're uh, one of the, the, the most significant impact is in thermal discharges, so it's actually not about water availability, but when um, water levels are lower, the temperature in the rivers are higher, and electric power plants have a limit for heat that they can discharge, um, and so they might have to, to ramp down their generation um, in response to that. So for example, in, in ERCOT in Texas, um, about 10% of the electric generating capacity is operating within about five degrees of their thermal discharge limit. So that means on the hottest days, which are also the peak power days, we have about 10% of the generating capacity potentially at risk. And since the reserve margin in our cot is only 15%, that does have the potential to cause outages. Upstream oil and gas is also really interesting. Um, and on, on the aggregate in the U.S., they're actually a small user of water. They use less than 1% of total water in the United States. Um, however, the, the nature of their industry, which is, is more mobile and relatively large um, water uses in, in one short period of time in a fixed area that moves from one place to another, uh, makes it hard to plan. And um, they're often kind of the last in line for water rights. And so in places where um, water scarcity is an issue, um, they might have a hard time securing a, a robust water supply. And in the U.S., our research shows that 70 percent of oil and gas development in the U.S. is happening in places that are water stressed. There are several factors that energy companies should use to evaluate the risk of water shortages. I think the most important takeaway is that water is a highly localized problem. And so depending on not only the water availability and, and the competition in a particular area, but also the localized concerns and the sentiment of, of community stakeholders, um, you should really take all those things into consideration and come up with a, a targeted strategy to your particular facility or, or location instead of a, you know, a broad strategy across the company. Some of the, th the factors that an energy company should consider are, first, of course, the, the total water availability um, and what, what the drought forecast looks like for the future. Um, but also, related to that, thinking about the competition for water from other users and, um, and also how the regulatory system plays into that. And so in most places in, in the United States, um, priority for water is given to domestic users, and often agricultural users are also prioritized over industrial ones. So you really have to understand you know, where your water right is within the system, and when there is a shortage, who's going to be the first to, um, to see restrictions on their withdrawals, and often um, energy users are, especially in the oil and gas space. Um, a lot of thermal power plants in the West have more senior water rights, uh, but oil and gas producers typically do not. Um, so thinking about all of those factors is critical. There are several strategies that energy companies can use to mitigate the risks from water shortages. Um, the first, I think, and, and the lowest hanging fruit, if you will, is around efficiencies. And so if there are operational strategies or technologies that, that energy companies can use to reduce the amount of water that's required in their operations, um, that can be really impactful and is often the cheapest solution. So in the oil and gas industry, um, one of the techniques that they're using to decrease their water consumption is the increased use of wastewater recycling. We expect that over the next 10 years, wastewater recycling rates in the U.S. will double. 
and a large part of this is because of the the impacts of water scarcity um, you know incentivizing operators to use less water. There's also a lot of technology development happening around the completions process. Um, right now, a lot of operators are moving from typically slick water fracks to gel-based fracks, which use less water per well. And there's any number of, of new technologies that are not uh, commercially viable right now, but hopefully will be in the next few years. Um, similar in the electric power industry, um, it's not so much, you don't have as many opportunities to make those kinds of marginal changes um, for one well, but the, the choice of technology in the cooling system, because cooling is the largest user of water in a power plant, is, is critical. And so in many um, dry areas in the United States, such as the Southwest in Texas and California, Power plants now are being built or retrofitted with closed loop cooling systems or even dry cooling instead of the traditional once through cooling, which uses more water. And so that's actually a really interesting point because in, in the Northeast, for instance, many of the power plants still have that once through cooling. And so even though the drought impacts aren't typically as, as drastic in the Northeast, some of those power plants are more susceptible. Um, Beyond efficiencies at the, the plant level or, or the, um, the technology, another very important area is in alternative water sources and in developing more robust water supply chains. Many oil and gas operators are looking to saltwater aquifers for brine potentially. Um, also we're seeing a lot of investments in um, midstream companies are now developing water pipelines to bring water from more robust surface water sources to more water scarce areas. And those investments can be on the order of $10 million, which I think really shows just how much value the industry is placing on this issue. And then finally, I think, you know, in the future, we'll really have to see more integration between the energy planning and the water planning in different places in the U.S. Um, again, ERCOT in Texas is starting to do this now where they're taking water scenarios into account in their capacity planning in the future. Um, and I think that's critical in order to solve this problem. We'll really have to see how can our, our you know, energy consumption, uh, or sorry, our energy production use less water and our water production use less energy.